Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Sean's name and budgeting is the game today. Now I hate the word budget because nobody wants the budget friendly version versus the luxury version of literally anything. But to get to that luxury baller status, it all starts with a good budget. And more importantly, how you manage your money now to have lots more of it later. So that's why today I wanna to be going over exactly how I manage and budget my money so that my money can make me money with every single paycheck that I get. And we're not talking about the 80-20 rules or the 50-30-20 rules because those are way too mainstream, one's complicated, one's simple, but neither of them go the extra mile which is really what's required if you wanna get ahead of the guy sitting next to you. So without further ado, let's jump into my 60-41 rule on how to go from budgeting to living a very luxurious lifestyle. Let's do it. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I do not come from money at all. I come from a very lower to middle class family where I pretty much built up everything that I have today all on my own, which by the way is all thanks to the 6041 rule that we're gonna be going over today. And I need to mention that this 6041 rule is not going to be easy. It is going to challenge you financially every single day of your life. It's a constant goal, and that's the important part of this entire video. It is a goal, okay? You challenge yourself physically, emotionally, spiritually, etc., every single day to make yourself a better person. But most people don't challenge themselves financially to do the same. Without a challenge of constantly pushing yourself, you're never going to get better. And same thing applies when it comes to finances. If you're not constantly pushing yourself financially, you're never going to get wealthier. And also, if I don't blow your mind by the end of this video, I'd be a little shocked because this 60-41 rule comes around full circle and it's super cool. So you definitely want to wait till the end of this video. Okay, so let's do it. First, hit that like button. Second, you're now wealthy. You're welcome. And thanks for watching. All right, just kidding. So let's break down this 60-41 rule to start on how you can manage your money, and then we're gonna go through a real life example. So it looks like this. 60% of your income goes towards your needs and your wants. We're talking things like housing, so your mortgage or rent, your utilities, your food, your gas, your clothes, etc. Literally anything that you need or want in your life, it's money you spend on your day to day. That's 60% of your income. Then 41% of your income goes towards your non-negotiables. We're talking things like savings, paying down debt, investing, whether it's stocks, bonds, 401k, real estate, whatever. This is the challenge that I was talking about earlier in the video that's going to challenge you every single day because it's gonna be hard. And if you're sitting there like, uh, Sean, that equals 101% dog, like, aren't you supposed to be this finance guy? You can't even add two numbers together? What the f Dude. Well, remember when I said that all budgeting rules do not go the extra mile? Well, this one does. That extra 1% is reminding you every single day that you need to get off your butt, go out there, and make an additional 1% of income that is not coming from your regular job. I'm talking about side hustles or something you can do in your free time to generate a little extra money, and this doesn't have to be some crazy self-employed, massive, next Facebook, Amazon business that eats up all of your time. No, I'm talking about something very simple that's not going to eat up a whole bunch of time, and it's going to make you a little bit of extra money every year. And 1% is absolutely nothing. For most people, that's less than $1,000 a year. The simplest things can generate you $1,000 if you had 365 days out of the year to do it. I mean like mowing lawns, washing cars, Ubering, helping a friend move, heck, a dang lemonade sand could probably generate you $1,000 if you had a year to do it and if you do it right. I mean, it's, it's really not that hard. Sad part is just most people are too lazy and once they're done working at their day job, they don't wanna think about anything else. They wanna sit their butt on the couch and watch Netflix all day, which if that's what you wanna do, totally cool, you do that. But for me, that's not enough for me, all right? And if you're kinda sitting there like, well, I don't wanna go wash cars or lemonade sand or all those things, I have so many videos and so many ideas on what you can do to generate a little extra cash. I've got some videos linked down below on some great side hustles or maybe some great jobs you can work remotely from whenever you kinda want. So there's definitely no excuse on how to generate that $1,000 extra a year. It's more so just you putting in the effort to do it. And most people don't even make $100,000 a year, so they won't need to make $1,000 extra when they do their side hustle. It's gonna be more like $500 to $700, which is even easier. 
Either way, I want to mention real quick that the 60-41 rule is really meant for people under the age of 50 and who are kind of considered in grind mode. Once you're over the age of 50, most people are kind of thinking about retirement at that point and they no longer kind of want to spend their money as frugally as the 60-41 rule or get off their butt to go make an extra 1%. You know, you've been working for probably 30 years at this point, at least 30 years. Um, so it's not really designed for people over the age of 50, more so under the age of 50 and really designed for people in their 20s to 30s. But all right, so that's the rule. It's simple, it's very easy to understand. Now let's apply a real world example with income and expenditures to realize just how challenging it can be to live your life this way. So let's say you net $60,000 a year, which is a phenomenal net income, by the way. All right, and we're gonna be focusing on net income. That's the important part, not your gross. Your gross is gonna be what you make before taxes, Medicare, or any type of deductions. Your net is what you actually take home. Oh, and this is just some super basic budget template thingy I found on Excel. Um, just use whatever template or make your own that you want. And then I urge you to go through your bank statements to see what categories you actually spend money on every single month. But getting back to the example, okay, let's say you net $60,000 a year. That means you've got $36,000 a year or $3,000 a month to live off of because that's 60% of your income. Now let's say your rent slash mortgage is $1,500 a month, utilities are $290, food is $500, gas is $100, entertainment stuff is $100, and you know, some new clothes or whatever are 100. And then I always have an other category for random purchases you'll make in a month that you can never plan for, like every single run to Target that these ladies like to make. And I put that for the rest of our budget, so $410. Again, you clearly will be creating your own budget as I just made up those numbers literally off the top of my head. But then next, you'll have your non-negotiables. Savings is usually the first thing you'll probably want to fill up, even though I kind of do it all evenly, but it's totally up to you and how you want to do it on your non-negotiables. Most people want that safety cushion first before they start investing. But again, I fill them all up evenly. You do you. But typically, you do not need more than 6 to 12 months of savings built up in liquid cash. As we just determined, we should only be spending $3,000 a month. So that means we need $18,000 to $36,000 in our savings before we no longer want to put a single penny in that category. So let's just say we throw $700 a month into our savings then we've got a car payment that we're trying to pay down and some student loans or whatever. So we're gonna throw another $850 into that each month. Then between our investment accounts and our, or our 401k or whatever we've got, we're gonna put another $400 into that. And I actually always do an other category on this section as well. Um, and these are things for maybe like a Craigslist flip or some cool investment opportunity that pops up, and, you know, whatever you want it for. But I like to keep a little bit of a cushion in there in case something cool comes up. So between the two, that's $5,050 a month, which equals $60,600 a year, which is our income plus our 1%. Boom. Literally that simple to figure out and to do. But now I want to show you how effective this can be. So let's say you started doing this by the age of 20, and let's say something else which is absolutely unreal, but let's say your income stayed the exact same at $60,000 a year for your entire life, which is basically like impossible. But by doing this, you're gonna be 100% debt free, all right? You're gonna have enough money in your savings account for reserves in case any emergency happens. And you're going to have a very, very, very minimum of $491,235 in your investments by the time you're 50 years old. Again, that's legit if you never, ever got a pay raise, ever. Half a million dollars by the age of 50 on the mega conservative side. Are you following me? So if you relook at the budget when you're 50, that means you no longer need to save any money because you have a hefty savings built up. You no longer need to pay down debt because you should be debt free by this point. And if you want, you can keep adding to your investing or you can take that freed up cash and do more with your life. And again, this example is super rudimentary, all right? We're not taking into account the cost of living rising or your pay raises increasing or you going through a life crisis or literally anything like that, debt fluctuations. I mean, there's so many other variables that come into play, but I wanted to keep this as simple as possible so you can understand it before you kind of go out and actually try it for yourself. It's super basic. All you have to worry about is only spending 60% of your income, generating that extra 1% every year, and the rest is gonna fall into place automatically. And will this 60-41 rule make you incredibly wealthy? No. No, it's not. I'd be lying to you if I told you it was. Your income is gonna make you incredibly wealthy, but this helps you manage your income 
so you don't have to work for the rest of your life. Retirement is actually attainable at a younger age with this strategy. And again, the biggest thing is not having to stress about your monthly expenses or anything financially related. I was cut off from my parents financially around the age of 16, 17 years old. And let me tell you, financial stress absolutely sucks, all right? It challenges your relationships, it ages you quickly, and it ultimately just makes your life miserable. But I will say that it does teach you the true value of money when you're at that point because by the age of 20, I've basically become financially stress-free and have never had to worry about Am I gonna have enough money to fill up my gas tank, to go get food, to go do the certain day-to-day -day things that I did otherwise stress about when I was younger? And again, it's all thanks to the 60-41 rule. It might look like it could be something easy and it's a very basic concept, but it's very challenging to do it day in and day out. And I just wanna say it started as a goal for me and kind of turned into a lifestyle. And I promise you, it is totally worth it. Again, I bit the bullet when I was younger to live that budget lifestyle. So now that I can live the luxury lifestyle. But since you've made it this far in the video, I wanna bring this all full circle for you. So comment down below what 60 percent of your net income again important that it's your net income 60 percent of your net income down below in the comments that's how much you need to live off of every single month and when you comment it you're probably going to be sitting there going holy crap i'm going to be eating ramen for the rest of my life because this is an obscenely small amount of money but as i've mentioned throughout this entire video the 60 41 rule is a goal did you catch that goal g-o-a-l 60, 41, okay, sometimes we reach our goals and sometimes we fall short, but we always need to be striving to do better. We do it with every other aspect of our life, so why not financially? But that's the 60, 41 rule, it's changed my life, Hopefully it could change yours too. And now it's probably a good time to mention that 79% of the world's population lives paycheck to paycheck with zero plan for retirement at all. So if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could share it with a friend or a family member or anyone you hold dear. Because what's the point of being financially stress-free and out there doing all the fun stuff when the people you want to do it with can't do it? Instead of giving them a fish, give them a rod so they can reel them in with you. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. Subscribe for more content like this. I'm always trying to release some great content to put you ahead of the guy sitting next to you. So I appreciate you watching my video, and I will see you in the next one.